that we will find there were problems in the technology that was being used, the equipment. Uh, there were problems with the uh, mistakes that were made by the individuals operating that equipment. Uh, there were failures to adequately uh, regulate and, uh, and supervise this uh, by the government agency that was responsible. Senator, great to have you with us. I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Okay. Good, good to be with you. You bet. I think this oil disaster will ultimately impact every American, and not just in the obvious ways like gas prices. For more on that, let me bring in Reese Halter, a conservation biologist at California Lutheran University. Mr. Halter, good to have you with us tonight. Put into perspective what you think we are dealing with and what the ramifications are. I mean, we have seen uh, millions of gallons of oil that have gone out, and right now there's nobody on the face of the earth that says we can definitely stop this in a timely fashion. What are we looking at? Good evening, Ed. Well, basically, the solution to pollution is not dilution. What we're seeing tonight is awful. There, uh, there are over 250,000 gallons of dis oil dispersant being pounded into the Gulf, and we know that the dispersant is far worse for the corals than the oil. And so what's happening right now, uh, uh, there's a moose-like substance headed towards our Floridian corals that is going to knock them right on their ear. In fact, it's going to kill them. Now, just so you understand why corals are important, corals have been likened to the Amazon rainforest for two mm. very good reasons. One, we got a high amount of species diversity. Two, we've got potent medicines, cancer medicines. We've got medicines from cone snails that are 100 times stronger than morphine for pain, the blockbuster prealt. We've got sponges. The sponges give us the blockbuster AIDS drug, AZ, T and they're potent from there. We've got Floridian sponges that have been helping people with leukemia since 1969, Ed, and we've got soft corals that give us the most potent medicines on Earth to fight cancers. And, and Mr. Halter, you were telling our audience tonight that all of this is in jeopardy if this reaches the coral reef. Oh, it's, it's not a matter of just. It, it, it's, it's going to reach it. Let me, uh, let me just paint this picture. You've got the, the, what's called the summer highway, the ocean highway, the loop current. The loop current will pick this dispersant up and drive it to the Straits of Florida, the beginning of the coral. Uh, to give you some idea, Ed, that's 80 times the volume of all water f uh, uh, rivers on Earth that's going to go through, that goes through the Straits of Florida, and it carries it all the way into the Atlantic, where the Gulf Stream picks it up and carries mm. it all the way up to Martin County. We're talking about 12,000 square miles of corals. These corals are 6,000 years old. Uh, there's 6,000 of them, and they're home not only to the, the corals, but to the American crocodile, to the manatees, to at least four species of turtles, and life. And you know what? That's our grandchildren's legacy yeah, we're talking about. Is. Mr. Halter, I appreciate you coming on and come back on our program again. You're a wealth of information, and I haven't heard anybody else put it like this. And I think the American people need to hear more of exactly what we are dealing with. And what you just said, I have no idea how we're going to put a price tag on this. I don't think we can. Mr. Halter, good to have you with us tonight. Conservation biologist from uh, University of uh, California, Lutheran. Thank you so much. Coming up, a righty nut job in California is reading from Palin Botlin's psycho book. I'll have him fired right into the